Today, Hearts of Iron A to Z has arrived at the newest country in the game, the Sultanas Vausa, next on the list according to the wiki. And I'm a little torn on this one. I did a video as Vausa at the release of By Blood Alone or shortly after, and it didn't really do well. It looks like you guys didn't want to watch it, so hopefully you'll enjoy this one a little more. We'll be playing as teeny tiny Vausa. We'll make it our life's work to humiliate Benito Mussolini. And while we're at it, we're going to annoy the hell out of Haile Selassie as well. So let's hop in Iron Man and historical focuses. Let's go. And yes, it says I cannot get achievements because I'm running a mod. I'll tell you about it in a second. First off, military. Let's just park these boys on the mountain of Aosa itself. Focuses. I'm thinking we, we go Sultanate of Aosa first, then political stability, and then grab as many military tanks as we can, and then develop an industry. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Research. Guns and better guns. Production, well, guns. <laughs> Construction, nothing, because there's not a single civilian factory in this country. Not one. Generals, we have a field marshal, Mohammed Yayo himself. He's pretty good, stats not terrible. He's got a really good bonus here, but unfortunately, Mohammed Yayo will not stick around for a very long time. Sadly, we will be replacing our flags as the Kandafo dynasty will be replaced by the communists. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to print men using Karl Marx's magic. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by The Ridge. They sent me one of their new wallets in black Damascus. But uh, as you can see, I've been a Ridge wallet user for some years now, and this burned titanium wallet is still going strong. That just shows you just how durable and long lasting these wallets are. But enough about my old wallets, let's talk about the new one. The Ridge wallet is designed to hold up to 12 cards and cash, either with a strap or the clip. I like this thing. And all the time, it remains slim and compact. And with over 30 colors and styles to choose from, there is a Ridge wallet for every style and personality. But the Ridge doesn't just stop at wallets. Their new key cases securely hold one to six keys and prevent them from jingling around annoyingly in your pocket or getting caught on just about everything in your backpack. And if you buy the Ridge Wallet and key case together, you can get up to 30% off your order. With Father's Day just around the corner, the Ridge Wallet and key case would make excellent gifts for any dad out there. And if you use the unique link on screen and in the description, not only will you be supporting this channel, but you'll also score some excellent deals. So click that link and get yourself or your dad a Ridge Wallet and key case today. Mohamed Yayo is really not a bad leader. The factory output's great, political power's great, consumer goods not so much, but overall, it's pretty good. But let's get going then and see what we can do here. And I'm also going to train two infantry divisions, mostly because, well, that's all of our manpower gone. We can't train anymore. <laughs> and all infantry divisions in this campaign will be named sure. after channel members. So if you want to see glory on the battlefield, click that join button, contribute to the cause, and you too can die for me or the greater good, either one. And we have a tiny bit of command power. That means we can get a general. I will need a general. Not a lot of great options here, if I'm honest. I like the middleman's beard, him and his twin. So congratulations, Hendrik, you're promoted. And Italy's going to come knocking. Uh, top option ends the game. It will be a short video. So let's click the bottom option and humiliate Mussolini. Okay, so I've been giving this a lot of thought as well. I want to flip communist. I want to do that relatively quickly. I'll get a bunch of political power from these two focuses that allow me to hire the communist revolutionary. What I also want to do is get rid of the fascist party because if I do anti-fascist raids, their party popularity goes down. It gives me extra stability. Plus it slightly boosts communism as well. So I'm thinking I want to do that at least once, maybe maybe twice just to speed things along a little bit. I might be wrong, but I think it's going to be worth it. If it's not, well, well, we'll figure it out. Okay, let's also force deploy these last two infantry divisions. And that's it. Now we sit here and wait and suffer. Six divisions up against whatever the Italians have to annoy us with. Let's also give Mohammed Yayo defensive doctrine. Give us a little bit more entrenchment. Not much, but a little bit. And we'll see what happens next. All right, so we've got Sultanate of Aousa. I'm thinking I, I want political stability, but I also want the men that warrior tradition here gets me and the bonuses that this tree gets me. So maybe just divert there instead or I get the communist revolutionary. I'm thinking revolutions on the on the agenda. All right, 
uh, let's get warrior tradition. Three extra units is going to be very useful, as well as uh, most of the bonuses we can get from this tree. I do not have a lot of divisions, but the members will serve me well. At least I, I hope they will. You guys better be up to this. Downside is that we're locked into a single tile, so we can't retreat. If one of these units loses organization, they die. So hopefully they don't die. Grab machine tools and research next. I kind of also want artillery. I want support equipment. I want trucks, trains, the whole spiel. But I have to choose, pick and choose my battles. Only got two research slots. Not a lot to do here. I'll keep making the terrible equipment just because it has high production efficiency. Let's get one more anti-fascist raid in and next political power is going to be spent on limited conscription. Yeah, we need more men. If I go with every mana warrior, I get reform conscription. So these two result in more manpower, but they're percentages of our total population and 10% of nothing is still nothing. So I'm thinking strengthen the irregular. Um, look, strengthen the irregulars is better because it improves the templates and it gives us pretty nice bonus. I also want to hire a chief of the army, either defense or offense. I'm thinking offense. Attack. Attack is always good. Just because it gets our army experience ticking and army experience is very important. So nine divisions, not bad. I just hope we're able to switch to communism quickly because I really need the portrait of Karl Marx. I need some of his uh, communist magic to print men. All right, got engineering. Let's grab radio. Reinforce rate is going to be useful. So I'll go down here, uh, get the factory. Then I'll get the Roars of Thunder for a bonus to artillery. Mostly because it results in one of our templates getting artillery added onto it, which is very useful. I could also go with Modern Infantry. That gives us two extra units. But I think I want the units that I have to just be better. Let's go and grab some artillery. Now I have the Italians here. There's a, a fun fact about Aousa. Aousa is in the province of Afar, which gives us 560-ish thousand population. Not a lot. Did you know there's more Ausans living outside? outside of the country than there are inside. Well, we have the province of Wello, part of Ethiopia. That's also our core. That has 685,000 of our people in it. And then we have Djibouti with another 86,000 people living in it. Also our core. So there's more Ausans living outside of Ausa than in it. Just a little fun fact. All right, let's go to limited conscription. More manpower. Definitely need more manpower. There goes Ethiopia. Now we have to move quickly. I would like to take Desi, but while it would give us a bunch of manpower from the province, there's really no way to hold it. It can be attacked from like five sides, pointless. What I can do is send half my troops into Diradawa. That gives us two provinces to cycle between and Diradawa has a couple of forts in it. Not much, but it's something plus it's mountains. It's not our core, but we... Well, it gives us room to breathe. I'll just make some diversionary attacks elsewhere to make sure our units can actually get there. There, now we sit on Diradawa. We have two provinces so we can cycle between them. A little less precarious and, well, we wait now. Our plan will be to eventually join the Allies, liberate all of Ethiopia as quickly as possible. I'll explain why later. And uh, just proceed to give Italy a really, really hard time. And then we do some shenanigans to Ethiopia itself, which is why I'm not going to sign any non-aggression pacts high all right, well, 30% communism is better than no communism, but it's so slow. Also gone and grabbed static warfare just to give us a little bit more entrenchment, but it doesn't feel like the Italians are willing to attack us, which is a little annoying. I kind of wanted to bleed them dry. Oh, well, let's mobilize more men already up to extensive conscription. It's not even enough manpower to fully staff nine divisions. Not to mention that the divisions I'm fielding are trash. I just don't have manpower. There are no men. Well, I don't want to just sit here. Uh, I'm going to try and take a tile, the weakest tile around me. I was going to spread out my forces a little bit, but maybe it encourages the Italians to attack me a little. Ah, there we go. Because I really like the Italians to do some attacking. I want them to lose manpower and uh, get myself army XP and division XP. Really, I, I just want to get this over with. Let's grab political stability for the, well, stability. And then I'm going to grab all of the industry I can from develop afar. I can add a unit of infantry to my divisions, but 5,000 manpower short to fill Nah, let's just wait. Let's just wait until we are good and communist. The general can be upgraded. He's now an infantry expert. Yes, ambusher would be better on the defensive, but I'm thinking long term, I want my divisions to have very high attacks. Since I won't have a lot of divisions, I want them to be 
really good. No, so far, so good. I think we'll, we'll hold this position. Might fall back to just Aosa and Diridawa, but for now, that's good. Let's just keep upgrading our units. Make this guy an infantry specialist so I can hire him here. That's going to be useful as well as the artillery specialist. Actually, no, I'm just going to hold on to the rest of my political power so I can flip communist quickly. All right, got our political stability. Now let's develop a farm. That's going to give us our first, our very first civilian factory. And then grab a couple of bonuses from the rest of the tree. It's not a terrible tree, but it's not as great as it could be. Man, there we go. A national referendum. We're now communist, baby. He has no bonuses, so that's unfortunate. Sometimes you can roll a really good leader, but... Yeah, well, also means I can start printing men. Ideological loyalty. That's really what we came here for. Oh, uh, we've also lost our field marshal because, well, the revolution came for him. We'll get a new field marshal. I think this is the most overpowered army thing you can get. Ideological loyalty. Marks just printing men for you is absurd. Like tiny countries like Aosa, this is the single best way to get manpower. All right, develop a farm. We can go this way to get ourselves infrastructure, free trains, and some free oil. But I'm thinking we want the other bonus is here. So a state bank and then we'll see. The state bank of the Revolutionary Democratic Union of Afar. We have some manpower in reserve. I'm thinking we slowly start building up this template. We can't add additional irregular infantry, which is unfortunate, but I can add regular infantry. We get the best of both worlds here and slowly but surely we'll build this up to something of a, a good size. Now we do have a civilian factory, even if it's in consumer goods right now. I will be building a railway first to link up this supply hub with the rest. So our country is at least a little bit plugged into the rest of the network after that pure mills i'm thinking we go up to either another recruitment law but uh, on the other hand i might as well just let marks print men and uh Let's go instead with war economy. Actually, war economy may not be that good. Let's go with free trade first, good bonuses, and then we'll go to war economy since, well, we have no economy to mobilize to speak of. Let's go with the uh, industrial fund here so at least have some factories to build with. I'm also going to make a little move, try and take Wello, mostly because it's a core. And if we can just capture it really quickly, just get units in there, just zippity quick like that, immediately gobble up like 17,000 manpower from the province, just queue up divisions, use up all that manpower, and then bail right back out of the province and just hold the two tiles we had before. We have what we came for, all of that manpower. Really just sitting here and waiting for an opportunity. All right, so we're making all of our basics. Uh, we just don't have any steel, well, any resources whatsoever, which is annoying. I could start trading though, but it has to go via sea and I only have the 10 convoys. Italy's gonna sink too much of my stuff, so I'm not gonna do that. Let's just go grab the research slots and then do the rest of this tree for some claims. Free claims are always good. Shouldn't be too much longer, like another six months? Yeah, next year, the funny business really begins when World War II kicks off. I'll be in an excellent position to immediately kick at least teeth in. We've also made our second general and army regrouping specialist, so our military high command's reasonable. So we got uh, division attack, artillery expert, infantry expert, and division recovery rate. All in all, good military high command. This is not a terrible country, it just doesn't have any manpower. All right, Germany's now uh, our enemy as well, so soon we'll see some tanks show up. Fortunately, I don't think I really have to worry about those tanks. I could join the common turn. I will probably do that at the very end of this campaign, but for now, no common turn. We want to join the allies. Also, I just realized I had day and night cycle on. I very much apologize for having to watch that. I completely forgot it was on. So, so sorry. I realize it's really annoying to watch. All right, looks like the fun is about to start. I can probably join the allies at this point. We've made friends and then as soon as we can and becomes realistic, we are going to be mopping up in the area. The trying to take out the Italians as soon as possible. Well, in a shockingly easy first push, push them Italians out of their northern port. Now I just need to wait for a little bit more manpower and I can help push them everywhere else. Our units are really good even if they're mostly militia and we're gonna hurry up and liberate most of Ethiopia as quickly as possible really. We want Ethiopia to do their focus tree and then we can swoop in there and kill them. And as is tradition Italy is just being humiliated by tribesmen with guns. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> it's not gonna go well for Italy. Let's just mop up in Ethiopia. So the, ah, sweet. I get to keep Eritrea, that's nice. Uh, that does mean I need to garrison it, which means I need to design a garrison template. Occupied territories get to be liberated workers with a cavalry template. There we go, high priority on garrisons. But first let's just, uh, for now, 
kill these Italians, get this over with. There's actually a significant number of Italians that is just going to die in Africa. And they're about to lose so many more divisions here. Look at the number of divisions they're about to... Oh, they're gonna die. They're all gonna die. Look at that. Now that's a juicy encirclement. Ah, glorious. We're now gonna help the UK here and we're gonna try and push Italy all the way out of North Africa. We might actually be able to steal French Somaliland back eventually but first let's uh let's try and take out the Italians in North Africa. And now we push. I hope to be able to push in through and just get on with it because this is a very annoying territory to fight in but if you can take some of the ports you're usually good. Just have to keep it going forward and lucky for us it doesn't feel like Italians have good troop deployment going on. So for now, we're able to push very fast. This is the hardest stretch between Tripoli and Benghazi. There's nothing there. It's a supply dead zone. So either we can push through or we can't. Let's see if we can actually get through here without running into the Italian army at fighting strength. Oh my God. The UK is just pushing through like crazy because they got motor oh they got some motorized divisions here so we're able to overrun most of these italian divisions okay okay we're we're getting through if we can just get the tripoli though i'll take these wins while we get them oh tripoli itself now ah no they have troops in tripoli still if we can surround tripoli Maybe we can push through. Okay, so now here you see the absolute disaster that the supply region here is. Uh, there's nothing. There's literally nothing here for us. Ideally, we would have surrounded Tripoli and taken the port straight away. That didn't work out, but maybe with a little bit of forced attack, we might be able to push through because these are low org, low strength divisions. So who knows? Maybe we can actually force them out. It's going to cost us manpower and equipment, but it might be worth it. Oh, oh my. It is going to be worth it long term. Ah, oh, there we go. All I'm going to do now is sit here, improve these divisions, get more manpower into my divisions, and just wait. I'm also going to take and ask for all the lend lease people are willing to give me. Let's see if I can get a little bit of a deficit going here. It's better than nothing. That was a quick end to the Africa campaign. <laughs> it's a very annoying supply situation here, though, so I'm going to try. I know I don't have a lot of factories, but I'm going to try and plug everything into the railway network so I don't have to use so many convoys. This is very likely to be a bad idea but I really don't know how else to do this. Let's go and grab our claims here as well. Let's start work on transport so I can invade Sicily. We're still a little way off though. I need more manpower to turn these divisions into something a little more punchy, but we're getting there. Unfortunately, while we're building up those divisions and waiting for the research to come in, there's really nothing else for us to do but wait. Italy is out of Africa, so there's no enemy here. So unless the Axis invade or Vichy France either vanishes or joins the Axis. Really nothing for us to do but wait. Also a little bored so I'm gonna research some air stuff. It's not likely that I'll build a massive air force but hey a little bit maybe who knows. Units are almost all ready getting two more divisions in. I've got them up to my usual template of 21 width. Not ideal for offensive operations but it will be good enough. If I had the luxury I would either get mountaineers to push through Italy or marines to make the landings happen but I am not in a position to really make that happen right now so these divisions will have to do I'm leaving again three units behind just in case Vichy France does something stupid or they get eaten by Germany in which case I can quickly gobble up French Somaliland all right Germany has gone to war with the Soviets that'll be a big distraction hopefully all right let's see if we can naval invade shall we slow the game down a little we have naval supremacy thanks to the UK so we will be able to hop across. I hope the Italians don't have too many divisions. I don't think they have. They lost a lot of stuff fighting us already. We actually have really good contribution. 24% is not bad considering we're a teeny tiny country in Africa. Might actually take a port here and if we can. Oh, brilliant. All right, troops move towards Messina. So far, so good. Can't really complain. Expecting some response soon, but until that arrives, I am uh, very happy. Maybe I can even push across Messina into Reggio Calabria, but it's going to depend on what units they have there. That's usually a very annoying strait to push across. Yeah, this is going to be a very annoying strait to push across. <laughs> Might happen, so I'm going to keep trying. Oh my god, we're doing it because they've got a terrible colonial division and nothing else we might actually push through. Force attack 
Because they are reinforcing it. I gotta hurry, gotta hurry, gotta hurry. Maybe we can get through. Maybe. Oh, we got across. All right, let's occupy as much of Italy as we can. This is gonna be so funny. Now, I do hope my uh, beloved allies are willing to funnel some troops in because <laughs> I am not sufficiently powerful to deal with the Italians all on my lonesome, but it is still incredibly funny. I think the biggest problem is just gonna be occupation. Who's the colonizer now, Italy? Who's the colonizer now? I did say I was planning to make Mussolini my my bitch, but this has gone remarkably well. So much better than I had anticipated. As long as I don't take too many casualties, I may very well do something very funky here. I really can complain with how well this is going. I'll be honest, kind of wish the UK would send some troops, but let's see what Ethiopia is doing. Unknown focus, but oh, they're in the African Union. So like I, like I said at the start, Ethiopia will always go for the African Union, which means as soon as they are no longer occupied, they start work on rebuilding the country. That gives them access to the rest of the focus tree, blah, 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 blah. Eventually, they go towards African unity, which is this one. That means they leave the allies. They are currently not in our faction, but we can declare war due to the non-aggression pact. But as soon as that non-aggression pact wears off, I am going for their throat, and I'm going to take all of that stuff. I'm still in the allies, so I can bring friends. They can't. Another juicy encirclement in Italy. It's not huge. Huge, but again, each and every one of these are just so funny. Oh, Italy is just so bad. This entire DLC is just the big Italy show and they can't even pull it off. Let's just kill them now. And after that, I can keep pushing further uh, north. Allies are also taking ground back in the Balkan. That's nice. Uh, I'll do the heavy lifting, boys. Don't you worry. So you're up to 17 members. Germany's not doing too great against the Soviets either. So this is just a matter of time. Unfortunately, we're kind of bottled up here. There's a whole lot of Germans here suddenly, which means I'm not entirely confident in my ability to push. So Ooh, short bursts, maybe, maybe. Oh, it does look like we might be able to get the ball rolling again. Take that province, get a little bit of an encirclement going here. Bada bing, bada boom! Encirclement and the road to Rome is open! The armies of Osa are impressively strong. We've only lost, what, 46,000 men, which is a ridiculous amount of units. That's 10% of our population. But we've killed almost a million Italians. I'd say we're pulling our weight. And the armies of Osa have reached Rome. We are occupying Rome. Oh, Mussolini, you're an idiot. We get absurd bonuses here. It makes this a very interesting small nation to play. I like being able to go on the attack like this. Let's keep trying to build ourselves some airplanes soon. Surely Mussolini is getting kicked out any day now. He, he can't stay in power after having Rome and more than half the country occupied by Ausa. Ah, there we go. Benito Mussolini is deposed. So a little bit longer now. Just a little bit longer and we'll get that uh, glorious event. We get a nice puppet out of the deal. Something we can work with. I'm going to lose a lot of factories when that puppet shows up, but I think it's going to be worth it. At least that way I don't have to occupy everything here myself. Another encirclement. Even a nation as small as Aosai is capable of great things. There we go. We have a puppet or do we not have a puppet? Are they are? Oh, there are puppet as well. That's so good. Okay, yeah, they can have the territory, so I don't have to garrison it. Brilliant, but that did cost me, like, every single one of my factories. Not so great, so how about we organize that a little more cleanly? No, they got this slice of Eritrea back. I haven't really tried. I, I also don't think I have the economy to make it happen. I do wonder if I could. Things are a bit of a stalemate here. I'm gonna try and do some funky business, see if I can cut through to Milan and then Lugano. So uh, we can cut off this section of Italy. I'll have to use my makeshift bridges, maybe a force attack to do it. Manpower remains a bit of an issue, but no, oh, that's just a part of the course for this campaign. Good news, I can declare war on Ethiopia. That means everybody is coming home. I am just going to quickly ignore everything going on in Italy for now and deal with that first. There's plenty of allies in Italy now. I, I don't think they'll throw this away. So let's just go and get ourselves a couple of cores. Troops are home. I can now declare war on Ethiopia. I can even call in all of my allies' uh, friends. Not going to do that just yet though. I don't need my friends for this. That said, my next step is going to be the Negusenegast. And I'll be unstoppable. I'll have all of Ethiopia's cores and there's nothing they can do about this because Ethiopia is really not strong enough to stop me. 
Not right now. Yeah, Ethiopia is about to get its cheeks thoroughly clapped. There goes Ethiopia. And I'm just going to conquer as much of it as I can. I may have to share parts with the Italians, though. Or the Germans. Okay, we came out of this pretty, pretty well. And we'll take that slice we weren't able to steal before. Okay, that means I can now... No, can't do the Nagusa Nagas until we've taken Iluba Borkafa. Okay, yes, we'll get cores. So many cores. All right, with that nastiness uh, sorted, I'll just leave these three units again to hover Djibouti. Everybody else, back to Italy. Yeah, Northern Italy, absolute stalemate. There's no getting through here. Look at the amount of divisions Germany is stacking here. It's not even Italy, it's all Germany and at the cost of losing Barbarossa. They're not going anywhere with Barbarossa. That's annoying, but there's good news. We have crowned Nagusa Nagast. We can now proclaim African or East African hegemony. And look at that, cores, baby cores. Let's see if the UK wants to be nice and give us some more stuff in the region. Look at that. More cores. Well, claims, but it's all ours. It's like pushing the Balkans. Not much, but little nudge here, little nudge there. Eventually, we'll crack the shell of the German Reich. And a brilliant Soviet move. They've naval invaded Bulgaria. Come on. I just I just want this to get over. Oh, I just want to get this over with. They have so many divisions here. And I'm just not able to crack the code. All right, Vichy France has joined the Axis. Let's get in there. Just like get Djibouti out of this. A core is a core. That's the final threat to our homeland dealt with. I'm mildly disappointed with my contribution being capped at 8%. I feel like we've done more. I also have to say there, there's no getting through the front lines that are currently established. So I'm going to try a naval invasion from the UK. We're going to D-Day. I think we're going to D-Day. That's really the only thing I can see uh, us getting something done with. Having just seen the UK try D-Day, every single tile here seems to be covered. Is this just going to be one of those campaigns where Germany seems supercharged and there's just nothing you can do? Look at this. How am I going to ever get through here? Germany's up to 10 million casualties and they're not budging. How are they not budging? Oh boy, Soviets suddenly cracked wide open. I'm going to try a naval invasion. I doubt I'll have more success than the Allies just did. Look at it. Whoa. How am I supposed to get through there? Frustrating to say the least. And even if, if you would manage to push one of these divisions, they'll, look, they'll just keep funneling troops in. Jesus Christ, they just funnel more troops in as you defeat the original positions. They just funnel more. They have, it must have like a hundred divisions just guarding the coastlines. This is pointless. This is just pointless. All right, big UK naval invasion in the south here uh, in Brittany. I'm going to try again from the north. Something has to work. It can't just all be bad. Oh, I also started building a couple of fighters. Nothing special, but I felt like it. We're not really going to contribute to this, are we? This is just gonna go terribly. Come on. Well, let's just halt. This isn't working. And again, I'm trying to support French landing. It just doesn't work. L look at what the coastline looks like. Oh, great. Spain joined the Axis. Well, who knows? Maybe I can bring my boys over to Gibraltar if it doesn't fall day one and we can push up through weak Spain. Yeah, it doesn't look like Spain was really ready to join this conflict. So if we can push out quickly enough, we can actually do something here. Germany has to be super distracted by now. How many fronts are they fighting on? The world's gonna go crazy. Let it go crazy. All right, that's more kills. At least we're getting a lot of pockets out of this, so we're, we're getting good kills. I just wish it would be over faster. Like, all these other fronts are deadlocks, except for the Soviet front. They keep losing more and more land, but they are holding on to Stalingrad. Very bravely holding on to Stalingrad. The Spanish have capitulated. Southern France is wide open. See if we can push in before Germany organizes some sort of realistic defense. It looks like we might actually just end up pushing through Spain instead of Italy. Oh, successful naval invasion in the Netherlands. All right, so it looks like we've cracked Germany's armor. They're spread so thin now. Realistically, truly, there can't be anything left they can do to stop us now. Can there? I'm afraid to speculate. Let's just keep attacking. <laughs> Spearheaded by the forces of the Sultanate of Ausa. No, sorry. The Revolutionary Democratic Union of Afar. Looks like the Allies are finally 
getting through. Now, what am I getting out of it? 8% contribution. 8. 8%. Eight We're almost at the Belgian border and we've linked up to the Belgian border. So more encirclements. The German army must be shrinking. Yeah, it's definitely shrinking in size. We've killed a lot in encirclements in Spain and France. Italy's still locked down though, as is Greece. So I'm a little surprised at how well Germany is keeping afloat here. And of course, now we've run into the Maginot from the wrong side. Just make it stop. I'm going to help the Netherlands get even bigger. And it's going to be funny if nothing else. I just want this to be over with. Uh, Afar troops have taken Berlin. Uh, well, it goes to the Dutch, but I'd, I'd say I, I earned. I earned Berlin. Let's, let's just ask for it. Yeah, I, I'd say we earned that. Soviet Union also pushing back. So there's that. Yeah, this should be over relatively soon. Once Germany cracks and, and just falls over, I don't expect their Italian puppet republic to really have all that much going for it. Another juicy pocket. More Germans for the slaughter. I want to see how many I've killed here. So we've killed a million Italians and we've also killed almost a million Germans. Not bad, not bad. There's all these German victory points left. So probably Vienna and Munich, uh, the big ones. There goes pretty much like a quarter of the German army, I'd say. Nice. That was all our doing. Well, the allies helped, but I'd say I, I earned most of that. It's done. Okay, what do I want out of this? And what has the peace deal done? Nothing good, I bet. So for our sake, we managed to take most of the Horn of Africa. It's just Afar Italy holding on to Eritrea, which I really, really want. And the UK, who I can easily fight for for that stuff, but we got everything else here. I also managed to snag some land up here. Not that I plan to use it, but I can create puppets here to, well, do some shenanigans if I were to go to war with the allies. We got Sardinia Piedmont. Overall, this is a very, well, I wouldn't say good looking, but a reasonably okay looking occupation of Germany, actually. Let's just bring our own troops home and see if we can if we can do something. But I, I seriously doubt it. Part of me wanted to now declare war on the UK, uh, take their last slice there and then click the button to become the Horn of Africa. But I am not going to be able to do that. For that, I would need to annex and occupy Italy. I don't think I can do that with my, frankly, really limited industry. I, it's just not happening. Guys. We'll just declare victory and through some unfortunate shenanigans with the new Italy mechanic, our campaign got cut a little short, but just a little bit. I think we, we did well. The nation of Afar, the Revolutionary Democratic Union of Afar, has risen from nothing to a reasonable regional power. The members, again, did excellent work. For a country the size of a stamp, these guys really pulled their weight. Let's hand out some medals and we can end the campaign. Oh, everybody has the medals they need. Okay then. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I actually had a lot of fun playing Aosa, a tiny country like that. It really forces you to play a certain way, and we certainly played a certain way, I guess. Either you hate it or you love it. Turns out I love it. I hope you guys loved it as well. I hope you enjoy this next video too. See ya.